This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We have yet another Kia Soul. This is 27 kilowatt hour from 2015, so it's seven year old. And we're going to do a degradation test again, but this one has not done that many kilometers. And by the way, this is the same guy who has that other, right? Well, his mother uh, has that, that soul that has so much degradation. And he just told me that actually uh, his mother at one time, but it was just parts of a year, uh, she was DC fast charging a lot because she didn't have home charging, but still that's that is a small portion over the big lifetime of that car. Yeah, that was the one with the red roof. But anyway, this one is a different one, different car, still a soul. Anyway, I just plugged it in and topped it up again to 100% because it was a 99.5. But you can see here that yeah, now we have 100% and then state of charge the BMS is 95%. Hmm. Now, it would be interesting to see maybe when the car was branch banking new, maybe 100% back then was uh, different here. And that's the way they can hide some degradation. But at one point, they can't do that anymore. But you see that uh, the, the, the cells, they charge to 4.1 volts. So I guess this is also a way to avoid too much degradation. Because if you, uh, I think if you charge a test not to 100% or a leaf, it will be 4.2 volts. And that's bad for the battery to charge that much every day but okay anyway you see that this oh ooh, the swirl was being discharged now you have to be careful but um oh yeah you can see it here you can see it here 12.2 volt okay you wanna don't, don't want to camp like this for too long but we have 65k on the anometer only after seven years so i'm going to do the regular stuff reset everything and then off we go and i can show you by the way yeah i i start seeing now that these soles they tend to be like this uh, gray interior is very common. Okay, anyway, let's unplug and then go. Oh. Yeah, it uses type one and Chalamo. And this is the chart port. <laughs> All right, we're on the moon now, so uh, not much going on. We have some traffic uh, out of Oslo as usual. So you see, we start here with 90 kilowatt uh, discharge power. Well, at least that's what is reported from the car. Uh, okay, it's going kind of slow up the hill. I don't want to uh, drive too fast. Yeah, I'm doing around 75 kilometers per hour now. So I would try to not have too hard acceleration and also, uh, yeah, try to cruise at around 90 kilometers per hour to avoid too high discharge rate. Because especially with these old batteries, um, you will have more and more internal resistance which means that when you discharge you will have more heat loss and also that is important uh, for me to test the actual driving because bms might claim something but i don't know if the bms counts uh, internal resistance in the estimation or not and uh, by the end of the day what matters is what what why is that mother trucker hammering <laughs> that is barely legal but by the end of the day you're not supposed to use the car in a lab you're supposed to drive around with it and what you get out of the battery actual energy out of the battery after losses is what counts so uh, this method is very time consuming but i believe it's the correct way so we're going to charge it up uh, at least to 90 percent i think uh, after the test now just to verify that the numbers that the car reports are correct we are passing by Garden One right now. Uh, the battery is down to 73%. Oh, can you see it? Uh, there, there, there. Yeah. And the consumption, actually, despite going uphill, is 153 watt hour per kilometer, but we have tailwind. And then on the way back, we have headwind. So I have to keep that in mind. And also, I have to keep in mind that uh, the state of charge scale here is not linear which means that I probably want to turn around at, um, well, well, okay, at 60%, which is probably 55-ish percent. So as usual, I will just look at GOM. Okay, how much do I have? Like 80 kilometers is what, what the car estimates. And then I look at uh, the distance back to uh, Oslo. Yeah, 38 kilometers. So um, then we just keep driving. Usually I have to drive to uh, Dal or Nebene, sometimes Minnesund. We'll see today. Okay, this is it. Nebenes. 
see here we have 59% left let's hope that's enough uh, yeah yeah let's turn around here and then you see here by the way the temperature on the battery pack has gone up this is the way lithium batteries work that when you discharge it you get a little bit of heat coming out just imagine when you are doing some work you know, a workout or something you're lifting something right then you are also eventually sweating but you the, your body gets hot because uh, your body is not that efficient <laughs> hmm. but uh, actually i think the body is highly inefficient compared to uh, electric motors but okay but this one here uh, so why uh, why does it heat up well, okay I, I can't explain why but at least i can tell you that uh, in order for the battery to heat up it needs to take the energy from somewhere and it takes it from the, the battery itself so that's that heat loss I've been talking about and you can't avoid it I mean it depends on which chemistry it is yeah you can have lower internal resistance but yeah, yeah so then my point is that with higher internal resistance then you have more loss so as the battery ages you will have more of this so um, and also as far as I know the car's instruments they cannot measure the heat loss they only measure what goes out from the battery or into the battery but not the heat loss so in a way um, the the trip meter or whatever you see there is not always correct so yeah but yeah, I have to say by the way the car feels fairly quiet uh, we are on semi-rough asphalt and uh, not too bad uh, so, uh, noise. I think this car has uh, summer tires on. I suspect maybe some kind of Michelin with uh, acoustic foam. Uh, I'm gonna check it out, I guess, if I remember, yeah, once we stop. All right, the test is done. We are now safely at the fast charger. So if you look at the stats, um, we have 5% left on display. 6% in the BMS, uh, cell voltage 3.2, hmm, wait, can you see that? There, there you can see it, yeah, and there, 26 degrees, so no cold get there, and then if you look at your trip meter now, uh, 156 watt amp per kilometer, okay, uh, slightly thirsty on the other runs, maybe because of summer tires, and then 123.4 kilometers, all right, let's plug in and then start crunching some numbers here. Huh, interesting. The charger reports that we started with 4%. And then how does the charger know this? Well, the car reports to the charger. So somehow the car says it's 4%, but then it was 5% in the display here. And then I'm not sure what's up with this one, but um, uh, in the previous sessions with other cars, we managed to get 125 amp. Uh, this one is only 120. So that's why, uh, well, huh. should we get higher speed? I think it was supposed to be higher, right? But it's still good, okay. I think I'm gonna charge with 90%. Try to make that as standard on these tests. Oh yeah, before I forget it, the tires, <laughs> I was so wrong. We have Nexen, but not the Infera. Nexen and Blue HD, the high definition. Oh, okay, 20560 R16, all right, okay. So, at least it, my impression is that they are uh, quiet. Wait, how old are they? Let me check here. We're looking for the, the date stamp. Uh, made in Korea, all right? Korean quality. Hmm, let me see. It's supposed to be uh, 2515. Whoa, what the heck? Yeah, it's a bit upside down now, but... Uh, 2515 <laughs> so this is also ancient tires seven years old tires oh wow all right let's summarize everything now so um actually i will take four percent as the remaining uh, battery not five percent so uh, i'm not sure if the, this decision is correct but remember that the car is reporting to the charger how many percent it has the charger doesn't know really um but I've seen some uh, inconsistency uh, in, in car scanner. This app that I use is called car scanner that even for eGolf, it was not displaying the, the same one there versus the charger info. Uh, and also, but also when I tested the Kia recently, the other Kia, 
when I was charging, I looked at the car's display versus the charger display, and it was also different, which is weird because remember that the charger gets the info from the car. <laughs> but okay, so 4% is the remaining then. And then based on all that, we have 20.1 kilowatt hour of energy. Uh, and then I calculated that we have 23% degradation. So that is on par with the other cars I've tested in similar age, similar distance. We're gonna check the, the table soon. But um, another check I do is that, okay, I charge from 4% to 90%, at least what is displayed. And then we see how many kilowatt hour the charger uh, delivers. And then I can calculate based on that, that if we would charge 100%, if everything is linear, we would get, uh, we would need a 19.9 .9 kilowatt hour from the charger. But that doesn't make sense since we pull 20.1 kilowatt hour from it, right? But then remember that the state of charge scale here is uh, amp hour based. It's not uh, linear. Uh, it's always been like this for the Korean cars. So uh, uh, what it means is that uh, it also depends on voltage when you wanna com uh, like convert amp hour into kilowatt hour, then you also have to take into account voltage and then voltage drops towards the end and then voltage. So, so what I mean is that uh, actually, uh, let's say 1% uh, towards 100% is more energy dense than 1% towards zero. And that means that if we actually take into account that it's not linear, then it's uh, roughly, my assumption is that um, if we would charge it 100%, if I would sit and wait long enough, and actually it wouldn't work anyway because it would stop at 94%, but if it would work, then I would probably need more like 21 kilowatt hour from the charger. Based on all this stuff, it's just an assumption. Uh, and that corresponds with what I've seen before, because uh, when you fast charge, you build up heat in the battery, which is loss. And then also the fan was running a little bit, but the fan is probably not more than uh, 50 watts, or maybe less. Uh, so that makes sense. So this is just like a sanity check to double check that, okay, can we trust the, the instrument cluster? Because some people doubt that we can trust it. But based on what all the numbers I have presented for you now, we, I, I, I can assume or I, I, I can say that we can trust the numbers there because we double check the source there and then the source from the charger and they seem to correspond everything. All right, and then one other thing is um, the charger screen. So um, it seems like this charging session, uh, it dropped slightly f earlier, uh, maybe just a few percent earlier than before. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many percent it dropped at, but it could be because uh, the battery was actually overheating. It was uh, uh, already close to uh, around 35 degrees uh, roughly is when it starts throttling, so it doesn't want to go too, uh, too hot, but at least that was for the ESOL. I'm not sure how it is here, but that could explain it. So actually for, uh, for the optimal uh, charging session, you don't want the battery to be too hot also. And then the last thing we're gonna check now is the table. So uh, uh, how is, is this one? I have to explain now, I updated some stuff in the table here. Um, the number of cycles that you see here is just an estimation because we don't know exactly how it is and car scanner uh, doesn't report number of cycles. And also how do you actually count a cycle, right? Because a cycle, is, well, I'm not sure per definition, but uh, if you charge the battery to 100% and then discharge it to 0%, I think that's per definition one cycle, but that's one deep cycle. But then if you only charge, uh, let's say you charge to uh, 70% and then you only spend 10% of that, you go from 70% and discharge it to 10%, then you only use one tenth of a cycle. But then if you do it 10 times, then you also spend 100%. But that is a smaller cycle. And actually that's better for degradation to have smaller cycle. So in a way you can say that, yeah, when you see those the documents and says how many cycles the battery can take, then by using or by having small, uh, smaller cycles, you will then get more total cycles than if you have deep cycles. So anyway, okay, uh, this is getting too complicated. But so the way I comp uh, calculate cycle is that uh, I look roughly at what the real world uh, range is on these cars. 
But then I also look at my own range test. So I, you see, I start re re reusing lots of data that I already have from other tests I, that I do real world tests. And then I take uh, the range in summer and range in winter and also the 90 test versus the 120 test. I take some kind of average based on those four conditions and I find like the the the, the all year all around uh, uh, consumption number ish and then I'll also know the the battery size roughly and I uh, then figure out what the typical range is for a full cycle and then based on the odometer we calculate or estimate the cycle so I think it's good enough right uh, and what else did I uh, add up here? Uh, yeah, yeah, I also have something called degradation cycle. It's just two, I, I should say degradation per 1000 or 1k cycle. So it's basically how much degradation do you have per 1000 cycles? Uh, that number almost makes more sense than the pure degradation number because you see that I actually sorted the table based on the degradation per 1k cycles. And then the lower the better. Uh, on top, well, you have MGs at the CV, but they're probably hiding something because they, there's got to be some degradation. That's also another thing is that every battery degrades, just like every wife degrades over time. You might not see it, but my wife also degrades. I also degrade. So believing that a battery doesn't degrade, it's like believing that your wife doesn't degrade. But okay, so anyway, so we had the 23% degradation. And it's roughly on par with the other cars on the same one. Yeah, so I'm not sure what else to say. Um, it Again, it seems like the Kias, they degrade more than e-golf. Uh, some people, actually, I think there was only one guy. He claims that, yeah, but you only tested a few. You only have very low samples here. So that's not statistically enough to draw any conclusions. Well, yes, I know we need to do at least 50 tests before we can count it as statistically uh, significant but do you want me to test 50 ESOLs and 50 GOLFs just to see if there is any correlation there? Ich weiß nicht but uh, anyway uh, at least my claim so far is that these Kias they degrade faster but uh, from what I heard also uh, it's just this generation even the generation after this one the 30 kilowatt hour has better chemistry, better design or something, uh, where this, this one is kind of like bad because uh, supposedly some cells, uh, some modules, they don't get enough cooling and they tend to overheat uh, heat up more than other modules. And uh, that's probably why uh, eventually some modules start failing uh, and then you get a big leap in degradation. Yeah, so I'm not sure this is just some claims I heard so I haven't been able to verify it but anyway okay very long conclusion but hopefully this conclusion gave you guys more insight about batteries and degradation and all this stuff uh, so I hope this was as correct as possible so remember to A, B, C always be correct and if I made some mistakes then please uh, en enlighten me all right that's gonna be it for now I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later